And now on Wink News, a welcome sight to parts of Southwest Florida. The Weather Authority has your Easter weekend forecast. Plus, more construction complaints as a new round of detours in Cape Coral near reality. And hundreds protest as new information comes to light about the death of an unarmed black man by police. Live from Southwest Florida's news leader, this is Wink News at 6.30. And did you see any rain today? A few people did. This is video from I-75 in Lee County early this afternoon. And while small and brief, hopefully the showers will offer some relief to Southwest Florida. Weather Authority meteorologist Zach Malak is in the studio with the latest forecast. Zach. Yeah, John Carlos, those showers were... A house destroyed in a fire. Police are trying to piece together what burnt this home down to the ground in Bonita Springs. It happened on Bala Drive, not far from I-75, just before 6 this morning. Wink News reporter Chris Grisby is live in the studio with the details. Chris. John Carlos, firefighters found this home engulfed in flames. Luckily, though, nobody lived inside as the homeowners were trying to sell the property. But people living nearby were shocked to see the damage done to their homes from the intense flames. Right now, investigators call this fire suspicious and are working to figure out who or what started the fire. Uh, they did their investigation. As far as I know, it's still undetermined until they do their report. Once their report is, is given, then they, they give a cause. Now, we reached out to the homeowner of the property, and he thinks someone may have started the fire intentionally. As soon as we get the final report back from the state fire marshal's office about this fire, you can count on Wink News to update you. Reporting in the studio, Chris Grisby, Wink News Now. Chris, thanks. A call for unity in action. A rally in Sacramento calls for justice this afternoon in the police shooting of Stefan Clark. Extra police on hand for a Kings and Warriors game tonight. Outrage intensified in recent days after an autopsy showed Clark was shot eight times, contrary to police officers' claims. Wink News reporter Laura Podesta has a story from the fight where supporters say this is another life taken too soon. Protesters gathered in a Sacramento park Saturday. Many are calling for criminal charges to be filed against the two police officers who shot and killed Stefan Clark on March 18th. The situation, it's, it's more than color. It comes down to wrong and right. An autopsy commissioned by Clark's family shows six of the bullets struck Clark in the back. Now, given the totality of the configurations of the trauma noted at the second autopsy, Death was not instantaneous. The gunshots to the back also contradict what the police claimed, that Clark was approaching the officers gun, gun, gun. when they opened fire. Police say they thought Clark was holding a gun. It turned out to be a cell phone. You shoot us down? Mostly peaceful protests have followed Clark shooting death. Twice demonstrators blocked the entrance to the Golden One Center, where the NBA's Sacramento Kings were playing. In response, the team announced that they will partner with Black Lives Matter to fund youth programs and bring transformational change to the city's black communities. This event was held Friday. I think it's a great forum to speak. Uh, we're doing some spoken word, people are writing. I think things of that nature are ways to, to get rid of grief and, and get through grief, I should say. And um, I'm just here to lend my support. Saturday night, Garrett Temple and the rest of the team will play the Golden State Warriors in downtown Sacramento. That's where protesters are focusing their rallies. Gloria Podesta, Wink News Now. If you want to read more on this case, we've posted all the latest details. You can find them over on the Wink News app. And on the other side of the country, students are holding protests of their own. They took over the administration building at Howard University late this week. It recently came to light that several university employees double-dipped on student aid and six were fired for misappropriating funds. A recent audit found that some employees got more money than their educational costs and, and pocketed the difference. Student leaders say they want more done. Why we don't have sufficient housing for the amount of undergraduate students here and why the administration building has no relationship with the students on campus. Annual tuition at Howard University in Washington, D.C. runs over $40,000. Students want the university president to resign. And bringing Easter joy to kids in recovery, hundreds of bikers gathered at Six Bins Harley-Davidson this morning for the annual Easter Bunny Run. Bikers rode to Golisano Children's Hospital with the police escort. They delivered Easter trees and toys to the kids inside. Many of the bikers say their favorite part is seeing the children simply smile, smiling faces when they get off the motorcycles. 
pull up and you lose your heart, you cry. I mean, you know, you see that they're really needing it and it's so much of a joy in your heart. But to see a bunch of bikers like this get together for a common goal like that, it's, it's just amazing. It's absolutely amazing. The toys collected today helps the hospital resupply their playrooms. Do you want to take a dip with this scaly guy? The Sarasota County Sheriff's Office tweeted out a photo of an 11 foot alligator in a pool Friday night. They say it broke through the screen porch and headed for the water. An animal trapper eventually pulled it out. That is pretty terrifying. Yeah, I don't want to take a swim with that. Only in, oh, only in Florida, right? <laughs> I mean, guys, it is Easter. You know, the Easter bunny is not a thing, I guess, in Florida with these gators. So around. this is like so the Easter, Easter version. Easter gator. I Easter wonder gator. what he brought the family. Look at him I'm, I'm so excited to see uh, what the terror. gator. Terror. That's what he brought the family. <laughs> terror. There's got to be like a cute gator basket someplace yeah. with gator some basket. gator eggs full of half dollars. Or, you, you find know, that. And you bring he it also he also it. brought them a, a broken fence there on their little yeah. lanai. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's true. He just wanted to take a dip. You know. He can hop over it. You know, bunnies can hop. He just had to go right through it. Through it. <laughs> <laughs> Poor cast, though, looking quite nice. We could go on for a half an hour about this yeah. discussion. The comparison, the bunny it's, and the gator. It was so great, so great. <laughs> and line, line. Oh, Zach, thank you. New tonight, these billboards are stirring up controversy. They read the NRA is a terrorist organization. The signs are grabbing drivers' attention and triggering emotional responses. The man behind the sign tells Wink News reporter Kent Justice that's exactly the point. Well, it got you to call me which you probably wouldn't have done otherwise, right? Um, it, 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 got, it has people talking. It, you know, we put up these billboards and it begins a conversation. Claude Taylor is the voice behind Mad Dog Pack. That's the name on the sign, which says in straightforward manner, the NRA is a terrorist organization. Someone who agrees stopped to tell us they like the message. I think, uh, you know, it's a little strong to say it's a terrorist organization, but in reality it is. You know, we in America like to deny things. While some will support the message, it's offensive to people like Cord Bird, a state representative and an expert on state and federal firearms law. He's also a member of the NRA. Wow, so um, the, the person that's behind the group that put it up, I mean, he, he labels himself um, as a veteran political prankster, but it's, it's, if it's a prank, it's not a very funny one. The serious issue of responding to the tragedy in Parkland last month is behind the billboard. Debating that serious issue continues with high emotion on both sides. I think make it very clear to a lot of people that the National Rifle Association, the NRA, has played a critical role in making available uh, to the general public uh, uh, what are essentially our, our weapons of war. The NRA and any of these mass shootings had nothing to do with them. And in fact, in the Texas shooting, it was an NRA member and former instructor who stopped the bad guy. Um, and so that's what I would like the, the other side, the person who put up this sign, to answer the, that question. Why, why are you demonizing an organization who's never had anything to do with any of these mass shootings? That dog pack has been around for several months, but that sign just popped up last week. And hockey also brings us this special sports story. So this is Scott Foster. He's a 36-year-old accountant. But when the Blackhawks lost their goalies to injuries, he became an NHL player just like that. No hockey team wants to have to use their emergency backup goalie, or EBUG there, EBUG. But in this case, Foster made seven saves during his 14 minutes on the ice, sealing a win for Chicago and earning the heart of the crowd. I'm an accountant by day, so a few hours ago I was sitting on my computer typing on a 10 key, and now I'm uh, standing in front of you guys, just finished 14 and a half minutes of NHL hockey. <laughs> You well, never know what skills people have, you know. I love it. Welcome to the EBA Club. So he only had experience in like rec hockey and gets out there. Really incredible. Like does again, amazing. usually yeah. fans cringe when an emergency backup goalie steps onto the ice. It's not a situation you want to be in. But he did great, yeah. and they were chant. The whole crowd was like chanting and for him. And they were good. It was six to two. So I mean, he, he had a coach still in. seven, seven right. or fourteen shots on goal. Yeah. It was it seven shots on goal in fourteen yeah. minutes? So I mean, that's yeah. still a lot. Yeah, for and that's any, a lot of time. Right? That's yeah. a lot of time. He set the bar pretty high. Then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure it was an honor to uh, work with Coach Q, but hey, uh, Blackhawks fan here. But anyways, uh, <laughs> forecast for your Easter. We are starting dry for your Easter Sunday morning. 85 for your Easter Sunday afternoon. A few showers back across southwest Florida in your afternoon and evening. And then we dry out and get hot. Upper 80s expected Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Looking good. All right, thanks so much for joining us. We'll be back at 10 o'clock. We'll see you there. Working hot.